everybody, I'm April Cummings and you're watching the Cayman Life Show where we showcase events, activities and the people of the Cayman Islands. We definitely have food on the brain here at Cayman Life this month and we think combining kids, cooking and competition builds character. We sat in on an annual event that is showcasing talent of the delicious kind. You have one hour and five minutes until you need to be done. What is it missing? Completely ready for judging. Six teams, two cupcakes, a panel of judges, a lot more pressure than most adults can handle. The bowl also has to be locked in. Welcome to the Cayman Youth Month Cupcake Wars. Before uh, the teams actually get here, we are actually getting lists from them of ingredients that they need in order to accomplish everything. It's the fourth year for the event that originally was only open to participants in the National Culinary Program. First, we gotta dry it out. This year, for the first time, we opened it up to the general public. Um, see how many other young people that interested in baking and are pretty good at cupcakes and the response is great. Each team's mission is to make a cupcake with fruit and another that's diabetic friendly. Is it too clumpy or something? And it sounds simple. In the fridge? Yeah. No. That is until the pressure's on. When it gets close to crunch time you see a lot of people breaking and it is, that is when the, you can really see the casualties of the cupcake war. These are melting it. Charles knows it all too well, even after making dozens and dozens of practice cupcakes at home. It was a lot different, a lot. And it's a kitchen I don't know. It looks like it has fewer things, but it doesn't. And it's kind of hard to move around, or like don't know where this goes, don't know where this goes. So it was frustrating. At some points it was kind of stressful because I was kind of scared of the presentation and putting the batter into the cupcake holders. Those are hot. Time may not be on their side, but working through that pressure, working as a team and kind of getting it all done, well, that's really at the heart of the challenge. And all of our teams rose to meet that challenge. What I saw is when the time came down, they were all on time. 25 minutes left. They were done. They did an excellent job with their creativity, their flavors. They did really, really good. I was actually very impressed. And it worked out great. We had about 100 people when it was max time at the judging. Our first cupcake is our fruit cupcake. And that's the kind of arena that we want our young people to constantly perform in. Thank you. To perform around an audience, to get used to being in the limelight or, or being thrust into lead roles. Today we made two cupcakes. Because cupcakes everybody is a leader in some shape or form. Baking bumblebees. <laughs> the sooner the young people get to practice, the better they get at it. So by the time they're adults, they're used to this, um, used to the roles of um, managing their time and working as a team and, and everybody has their own spot on the team and have their own parts and roles to play. It's not like I won't stop making cupcakes. I might make them more often now. Charles may not have won this round, but he has his eye on the prize. It's kind of cool that I'm this good that I got into a tournament. Even though I might not have gotten the first three places, it's, it's inspiring. Well, you guys did a wonderful job today. You should be very proud of yourselves. Coming up on Cayman Life, a restaurant makeover as Nadine takes over the kitchen at Abacus. Then sustenance of a different kind, cleansing carnival. Gordon Solomon shares his work and a part of his history at a unique pop-up exhibition. Later, it's Cayman First Classroom of the Month with a focus this time on community service. The Cayman Life Show will be right back. After days, weeks, sometimes months of hard work, exercising, eating, being self-disciplined, then there's this horrific moment. You're invited out to eat, someone you can't say no to, and it's at a restaurant. Well, there's one local woman who is making sure you never have to panic about that again. We've just taken the items from the menu and just modified them. There's a kind of restaurant takeover going on in Abacus tonight. And it's wonderful to know that you can eat out and still be healthy. Two dozen women are here to share a meal and learn a few strategies on how to make healthier choices while out on the town. One of the best ways... Nadine Dumas is the brains behind this event. The restaurant takeover was a way for me to show women how to socialize and attend um, get-togethers with friends and be able to feel like they're not going to be throwing their, their health and fitness goals off track and to be able to go out to restaurants and just not feel guilty with what it is that they're eating. Nadine says living and being healthy aren't about extremes, but really about balance and sometimes just getting a better understanding about why we eat the way we do and the impact that can have on both our bodies and our moods. I talk to them about everything from eating healthy to being able to make changes 
to certain dishes on a menu and just feeling comfortable with doing that. I also talk a lot about the emotional side to eating and how it is tied into um, you know, why we eat certain things and why we feel certain ways. Dara Flowers Burke came on the recommendation of a friend. She loves that this is not about deprivation, but instead about making smart choices. It was super accessible and it was super cool because we we're at a regular restaurant out because I actually eat here all the time. And just discovering that you can look at an ordinary menu and find things that are healthy and good for you, it just makes the whole process less daunting if you're trying to shed a little bit of weight or just be healthier in your lifestyle. William O'Hara is the head chef at Abacus. Here, like, we're very kind of open in the kitchen, like we don't mind if people come into the kitchen and ask questions. I like the interaction as well with the customers. He and Nadine work together to make the menu tonight both tasty and healthy. We want people to come and actually not be afraid to kind of ask the questions about the food, you know, because we're, you know, we're, we're obviously we're, we create these dishes that we think taste brilliant and look lovely, but, you know, if, if they're not kind of what people want, then obviously they're not going to order it. So, we, you know, we have to work a little bit together with the customer to kind of, you know, satisfy their needs. His goal is to show participants that they can advocate for healthier food without offending the chef or giving up on flavor. Let's say that you are out for dinner. For Nadine, this is hopefully the first of many restaurant takeovers and a chance to leave more of us finding that balance between the food we love and the healthy bodies we crave. It actually was really amazing. If you'd like more information, visit NadineDumas.com. Now, Ed Kamanian shares a part of his history as another finds purpose in showcasing art. Just another extraordinary find as we explore Cayman life. It's called Cleansing Carnival. It's about my experience in the carnival. Gordon Solomon says this work represents shadows of his experience in Carnival, his interactions with the masses, and distant memories of himself as a young man engaged in sensual dance amid a colorful masquerade of faceless bodies. You don't want to spend your whole life in a Carnival. You want to get in and <laughs> you want to get in and give it your all and then, you know, find your way out and then share. The work is vibrant with strong stories combining large and small pieces, making it possible for just about anyone to own a piece of Gordon Solomon art. This series allows the collector as well as the new collector to acquire a piece. This pop-up gallery at the Cayman Cat Boat Club is hopefully one of many more to come. Mona Mead of RTM Solutions organized the exhibition. We want to support artists in the sense of giving them the, the structure or giving them the support that they need when it comes to putting together a show and promoting it um, so that they can work. She says her goal is to ensure that the work of Caymanian artists stays at the forefront of our minds. Art speaks to our culture and what's happening and, and right around us right now and it also captures history so a piece of work, work that was created 30 years ago we look at it now and we can say well wow that's what life was like back then. It, it is very important that we actually take a look at what we are, who we are artistically, creatively, whether it's artwork or visual arts, writing, singing, you know, poetry, whatever it is, because it's something that can last for so long and it says so much about us. Learn more about Gordon on his website at gordonsolomon.com. Coming up on the K-Man Live Show, K-Man First Classroom of the Month, with an eye this time on community service and giving back. Don't forget you can watch our segments online at kmanlife.tv. Each month, K-Man First seeks out students, teachers, and organizations who deserve recognition. Sometimes it's academic, excelling or making dramatic progress toward their goals. Other times, it's about a sense of community and development of other skills that are equally important as young lives are shaped. And if we do another family fun day, 
like when we did the car raffle. Remember your cupcakes and lemonade that you sold? It's never too early to learn the value of community service. That's the lesson we took away from Georgetown Primary's Early Act program, sponsored by Rotary Sunrise. It's for the primary school aged children, and it's based on the ideals of Rotary. Like the Early Act Pledge which they recited at the start of the meeting this today is based on our four-way test which is sort of like the ideals which Rotarians are expected to live by. So we start to put into them the ideals of good citizenship. This program is for primary school students and they've embraced it, stepping up to the challenge of finding ways to support the community and be good citizens. We involve them in the process of deciding like what projects they're going to do, what fundraising events they want to do. We taught them through it, we taught them through the pros and the cons, do you think this is a good idea or not? So they actually get to come up with the ideas themselves. We started putting things together. One of the big projects this past school year focused on the environment, learning ways to save the earth, teaching others what they learned, using a bit of creativity and some recycled items to reiterate the point. I also like it because it really shows that you shouldn't throw away stuff, you can make something new out of it. The students also learn about the realities of leadership. Since they have the same kinds of positions and responsibilities, you'll find in an adult service organization. So they have a president and a vice president and they elect these people to roles. So they, you know, again, they learn that responsibility of what goes along with a club. And the adults are pleased with the kind of initiative and commitment they're seeing at this early age. It is very important because they're learning responsibility. They're learning to serve their community. Every child we talk to feels good about the program. In fact, they're giving the Early Act program rave reviews. It's been really fun being in Early Act because you get to, you get to help give back to your community and help your community at a young age. They tell me their loving work as a team. It was really nice working as a group on making it. Loving learning from each other and doing something good together. It's been fun and I really enjoy what we do there, do here because I get to have fun and hang out with my friends but also like help others and help the community. I have a lot of fun in early act because then I know that I'm doing something good for the community and I feel glad that I'm helping out. I think it's been a really exciting experience since I started early art. Um, I had a lot of fun in all the activities that I've been participating in and it's really a pleasure. That's why the students in the program are receiving the Came In First Classroom of the Month Award. I feel um, really proud because I know that everyone's been working hard on their projects and on the community service and it feels good to like be appreciated. Thank you very much Ms. Chow for taking care of these wonderful kids and allowing them to do what they do. Their joyful focus on giving back reminds us of just how important it is to start good habits early. We because this is the next generation of community leaders. If you know a classroom doing amazing things that you think deserve recognition, it's easy. All you have to do to nominate them is send us an email to classroom at caymanlife.tv and then just tell us why you think they should be the next Cayman First Classroom of the Month. Thanks for joining us for this month's edition of the Cayman Life Show. We're online at caymanlife.tv and on television on Logic Channel 33. And remember, you can find out the latest events and activities or submit your own to our events calendar. It's on our website, it's free, and it's very easy to use. For you news junkies, we also curate the top news of the day and week with our Cayman News Rundown. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time.